we are ready to move on to the next section. So what we're going to do is grab the iPhone 1, drag it onto the um, timeline, and we're going to reduce this a bit. So I press S for scale, and I'm just going to make this about this size here. I'm also going to change the endpoint for this. So as soon as I dissolve the text, I'm going to trim this. So I'm going to change the endpoint here. I press Option in the left bracket to cut that at that point. And then I'm going to keep that for about a second so I can click on the timeline indicator and put that at 12 and then option and right bracket on the keyboard so I can trim that as well. Okay, so we're ready for the first section. We're going to add some text now. So I click outside and go to the text tool and press 1G. That looks good. I'm just going to animate this and I'm going to have the same out points for that. So I'm going to select my iPhone, press O for out point, and I'm going to use that to trim the text for the 1G. Same kind of deal. I select the iPhone 1 and then press the letter I so it goes to the end point, then switch to the 1G text layer to option left bracket and now it trims to that specific spot. I'm going to do a quick save and now we're ready to start animating this 1G. So I'm going to um, go to animation, browse presets and I'm going to select from the text presets 3D text and I'm going to do a 3D fly down. Now this is similar to the other one I chose, but comes 3D. Okay, so I double click on that. And now I see the text coming in. Now it's a little short, so I'm going to have to either increase the timeline so it takes longer to do uh, or I could actually mm, reduce the or increase the speed on how fast this will happen <clears throat> so I'm gonna do both actually because one second might not be too much anyway so I'm going to extend this to about one second and a half and do the same here and then I'm going to open the 1T effect panel. And here I see the keyframes for that. Keep opening. And I can bring that closer. So now this will happen a lot faster. Stay there for a second. And then we're going to move on to the next text. So I'm going to close this panel or this uh, layer, sorry. And then I'm gonna go to um, the next section here where I'm gonna place the 3G. Same deal, I can press the O so I know exactly where I'm at. If I want to just move one frame over, I can use the um, command on the Mac and the right arrow so I move one frame over and uh, same if I want to move one frame back I do command left arrow <clears throat> alright so now I'm going to trim that iPhone 3 and I'm going to keep this for about a minute and a half or I'm sorry a second and a half so this is going to be right here. I'm going to trim that. And now I got the iPhone 3 ready to go. Same deal. I'm going to reduce this, but not as much as the other. So I show a slight increase 
and then now I'm going to duplicate this 1G. So I select the layer and do Command D or Control D on a PC. And I can move this all the way to the top. If I press the return key, I can say this is 2 or 3G. And then I'm ready to go. The only thing I need to do is just move it over so it matches the other timeline. So actually I did make this a little bit bigger, longer, so must have miscalculated when I enter the number. So there we go. I will just use that the same. Okay, and then I can move this to the other side just to create some more visual interest. And this is going to be the first 3G. Save that. Good. And now I'm going to move to the 4Gs in, or um, 4 in 4G and 4S. Okay, so let's move on to that. I'm going to grab the 4 first. And I'm going to make this smaller. Press the scale. Same kind of deal. Press the O to be at the output. Press the option and select the layer first. Option. I'm sorry, not option, uh, command, and the right arrow to go one more frame. Then I'm going to do option in left, left bracket. Uh, I have the layer selected so I can trim it. And then I'm going to do the out point once I gather the uh, 3G text that I'm going to duplicate. So I got the text now. Notice that I try to think, keep things within a uh, pattern. So I have text and then the phone itself. Okay, so I'm going to press the O for the out point and then switch to here. Can trim that now. And I'm going to switch this one to this side and do 4G. Okay. And last but not least for the 4, we're going to do the 4S. Make this just a little bit uh, bigger. So right there. <clears throat> Same kind of deal. Go to the out point, do command and the right arrow. So I can do one extra frame. Trim that by selecting the uh, layer and then do the option left bracket. I'm going to keep that there until I copy the text, which I use for the length of the clip that I need. Shift this over. Hit O for the out point. Select the other layer and I can trim it to that. And now this is going to be the 4S, but I'm going to switch it to this side right here. Okay, so that's all the phones before the 5. Okay, <clears throat> now when it comes to the 5, we're going to just grab it here, drop it. Make this smaller. Just about that. Same routine. Switch to the top layer now. Change the out point. And now the five is going to go on the top. Okay, and then we're going to do the 5. And I'm going to make this a little bigger. Uh, 
that's a little too big. I can also reduce the size of text or an object by grabbing one of the corners. And once I start reducing, I hold the shift key so I keep it within the same proportion that I originate, originated the object. <clears throat> and now we're good to go. Okay. Good. All right. So we got all the different fonts done. Now, what we want to do is do that kind of cool transition that looks as if it's morphing from one to the next. So what I want to do is I can create this um, iPhone one. This one had a bubble effect in the beginning. So I'm going to go right to the end point for that, which is the letter I to get to that. Uh, while I have the iPhone one selected, I go to Bra animation, browse preset, and I'll show you the one that I'm going to use is under the um, transition move movements and is the zoom. Nope, not that one. Uh, zoom bubble effect. So I'm going to double click to activate that. And now we can kind of see how that works. Now on here for the other phones, I had, um, I'm going to go again to the in point, but for the image. And I had another preset here for the movement, and it was this card wipe. Or, yeah, this is the one. So I'm going to double click on that. Oh, you know what? This one is the smaller one, um, which is not bad actually. But um, I'm going to use the same one as I originally had. So. I go to animation, browse presets, and do uh, transition movements, and I'll do the second car wipe. Or I'm sorry, actually, I think it was the first one. Yeah, first one. Double click on that. Yep, and that's the one. Now notice that there's a little extra space where I don't see anything. That is because I don't have any layers underneath. But if I want to create that sort of transition, I could extend the background 1G for a little bit longer. So then I can kind of see more of a transition happening here. Let's see. Well, it's not really significant. Just it does sort of overwrite the previous one. So I'm going to switch this back to where it was. <clears throat> and then I'm going to try the same effect on the second one here. And I can apply the same uh, animation preset that I just done. If I go to animation, apply animation preset. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I won't be able to do that. Um, yeah, now I'll just go over here and go to uh, recent animation presets. And I'll do the 2D fractured. Oh, but I applied it. I see what I did wrong. Um, I don't know if you guys caught it. I applied it to the text versus the graphic. Okay, there we go. So I can do the car wipe again. And notice I can also use the shortcut for that. So if I use shift, option, command, and F, that will do the previous. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, I did the same thing. I applied it to the text. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to lock my text layer so I don't hit on those by accident. There we go. And here we go.
Now, one of the things I don't like about this is how long it's taken to complete that effect. That is a big difference between the one that I had already done. So here, actually, I wasn't even lined up. So I'm going to switch my keyframes so it happens way faster. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, and then on here, I'm going to switch this text layer. Oh, and that's why I wasn't getting it earlier, too. I had the um, text layer I was extending. I got confused with my text layer in uh, graphic order. There we go. Should I like that? So I am going to extend the phone for a little bit until <clears throat> finish completing the transition. So this one looks pretty good here for the effect I'm trying to complete. So that's not bad either. Obviously it's going to look a little different because I'm making them bigger as they progress. So uh, all right, so the one that I need to adjust here is the speed. Notice how it's taking too long to complete that, where it should be done within this section. So I'm going to open this layer and see where the keyframes are for that. <clears throat> yeah, they're way off. So. I'm going to bring those closer. There we go. So it creates a better transition. And then this one obviously is way off as well. So I'm going to open that and bring it closer to the beginning. And it's going to take a lot less time to complete as well. And here I need to extend the keyframe, I mean the timeline from the previous object. There we go. Okay, so we're getting more of a morphine effect going on now.